a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video one and introduction. Video six, volume of distribution. And once again, we're going to start with a model. And the model in this case is a bucket of water. Somebody comes along and they throw in one gram of blue dye, which dissolves into the water. We then take a sample of the water, analyze it, and find that the concentration of the blue dye is 100 milligrams per litre. So we can calculate that the bucket contains 10 litres of water. Really simple model. Let's modify this model a little bit. We have the same bucket of water, but now that bucket contains a sponge that has a high affinity for the blue dye. Once again, someone throws in one gram of blue dye into the bucket, it dissolves in the water, but now most of the dye goes into the sponge. So if we take a sample of the water, analyze it, we now find that the concentration of the blue dye is 10 milligrams per litre. And so the bucket appears to contain 100 litres of water. Of course, the bucket hasn't got any bigger. It just appears to contain 100 litres because the sponge has soaked up most of the dye. Let's translate our model into drug in plasma. Let's say we inject two milligrams of drug into an individual. We take a sample of plasma, analyze it, and find that the concentration is 540 nanograms of drug per milliliter of plasma. So we can calculate that that two milligrams of drug apparently dissolved in 3.7 litres of plasma. That means that the apparent volume of distribution of that drug is 3.7 litres. And by coincidence, the body contains around 3.7 litres of plasma. Let's change our model a little bit. Here is our individual. Here is a syringe full of two milligrams of drug. It's injected, but now this drug is lipophilic. And so some of the drug goes into a body compartment, such as fatty tissue. Now we take a plasma sample, analyze it, and find that the plasma concentration of the drug is 0 0.14 nanograms per milliliter. And so now that two milligrams was apparently dissolved in 14,000 litres of plasma. So in this case, the apparent volume of distribution of the drug is 14,000 litres. So like the bucket, the body does not contain 40,000 litres of plasma, which is why we use the term apparent volume of distribution, although in common language we drop the apparent and we just use volume of distribution. Heparin and insulin distribute in plasma, giving them a volume round about 3.7 litres. Chloroquine is a highly lipophilic drug and so it partitions from plasma into body fat giving it a volume of distribution of 14,000 litres. The definition of volume of distribution 
is the apparent volume necessary to contain the total amount of administered drug in order to achieve the observed plasma drug concentration. Because you have to know the mass of drug entering the plasma, you can only calculate volume of distribution from an intravenous dose. Units for volume of distribution are unsurprisingly volume, commonly litres, but you may also see units such as millilitres per kilogram body weight. How do we determine the volume of distribution? Well, we have to start with intravenous data. Here is the table of data for a two milligram intravenous dose of pretendolone. These data were first shown in video two. And here is the semi-log plot associated with those data. Now, I just want to point something out and the reason will become apparent in just a moment. The first time point at which a blood sample was taken and the plasma drug concentration measured was at one minute. And it gave a drug concentration of 25.01 nanograms per mil. Before we start doing any calculations, we have to clarify some of the terminology. In video two, it was explained, the intravenous plot does not have a Cmax or a Tmax, but you may see the drug concentration measured at the first time point referred to as C0. C0 means concentration at time zero. But this concentration, 25.01 nanograms per mil, is not at time zero. It's at one minute in the case of pretendolone. Sometimes the distribution phase is back extrapolated to the y-axis. So in theory, that does give the drug concentration at time zero, but it's still called C0. So you can see that we're getting multiple definitions for the same term. Incidentally, extrapolation of the distribution phase is really quite unreliable. You may see this formula to give the volume of distribution. Seems sensible, the volume of distribution is the dose administered intravenously divided by the drug concentration at zero time. It kind of fits our bucket of water model. However, if you see that equation, you've got to ask yourself what definition of C0 is being used. And if that's not enough to confuse matters, you'll find in a moment that C0 is sometimes used in another way. We'll wait until we get there. The overall message, therefore, is beware of C0. If you see it in an equation, make sure you know how it's defined. But do not despair, because this video will make it all a lot clearer in just a moment. There is actually another problem with this equation, and it concerns the distribution phase. And to explain this, we're going to return to our model of a bucket of water. Here is our bucket with a sponge and someone comes along and adds one gram of blue dye. The blue dye dissolves in the water, but it takes time for the dye to reach an equilibrium between the water and the sponge. The dye does not go into the sponge instantaneously. It does so over a period of time. Let's just say that it takes 10 seconds for the dye to reach equilibrium between the water and the sponge. If you take a sample one second after the blue dye was added and you analyze that sample and you find that the water contains 100 milligrams per liter of dye, 
then you can say the apparent volume of the bucket is 10 litres. Five seconds after the blue dye was added, then more of that dye has moved from the water into the sponge. So let's say when we analyse a sample of the water, we now find it contains 50 milligrams per litre of dye. And so the apparent volume of the bucket has gone up to 20 litres. And then 10 seconds after the blue dye was added, we take the sample of water. Let's say we find this sample contained 10 milligrams per litre of dye. Now our apparent volume of the bucket has gone up to 100 litres. This sample was taken after 10 seconds. At this point, the blue dye has reached its equilibrium between the water and the sponge. So any sample taken from here on should also give us an apparent volume of the bucket of 100 litres. But you can see that the volume of the bucket seems to increase with time until the blue dye is in equilibrium. It's therefore important to measure the distribution of the dye or the drug once it is in equilibrium with the water or plasma and sponge or body compartments. If we go to the plot of drug concentration versus time for the intravenous dose, where along that plot can we say the drug has reached equilibrium? The drug has reached equilibrium by the elimination phase. And so if we back extrapolate the elimination phase to the y-axis, that gives us the drug concentration at time zero once the drug is in equilibrium between the plasma and the body compartments. Extrapolating back the elimination phase is relatively straightforward because it is a straight line on the semi-logarithmic plot. The drug concentration at time zero on the y-axis is designated as C0 with brackets around the zero. Those brackets distinguish it from any other ambiguous use of C0. But please be careful, because the use of C0 with brackets around the zero is not universal. And some people still use C0 to mean a back extrapolation from the elimination phase. So once again, beware of C0. And if you see it, be sure you know how it's defined. We can now use this equation. The volume of distribution is the intravenous dose divided by C0 with brackets around the zero. In theory, that is a valid method for calculating the volume of distribution. There is still a problem with that equation because if significant elimination occurs during the distribution phase, that can introduce errors. The preferred equation for calculating volume of distribution is V equals the dose given intravenously divided by the corresponding AUC multiplied by the elimination rate constant. That equation is independent of the shape of the drug concentration time plot. That is why that equation is preferred. The equation is derived in the textbook. I'm not going to derive it here because it requires an understanding of another pharmacokinetic parameter that we haven't met yet. So we'll leave it here, and if you want to know where the equation comes from, then you can look it up in the textbook. 
for pretendolone, a two milligram intravenous dose, gave an AUC of 91 nanograms per mil times hours. That was in video four. We know that the elimination rate constant for pretendolone is 0 0.122 per hour. That was in video 3A. So if we pop the values into the equation, we get a volume of distribution of 180 litres. So we can say that the volume of distribution for pretendolone is 180 litres. In practice, that means if you injected, shall we say, 10 milligrams of pretendolone, then the expected plasma concentration, once the drug was in equilibrium, would be 55.5 nanograms per mil. Well, the volume of distribution of 180 litres, clearly pretendolone is partitioning out of the plasma into some other body compartment or compartments. But from the value of the volume of distribution alone, there's no information as to where that drug goes. Now, I think you can see that volume of distribution is a little bit more complicated than that first model with the bucket of water might have suggested. And there are other aspects to volume of distribution that we've not covered in the video. So if you want a deeper understanding, you can go to the textbook where there is further information. In the next video, we're going to look at another pharmacokinetic parameter that needs an intravenous administration, and that is clearance. Hope to see you there.